What's up YouTube? Zach with Veteran Construction here. We have another video. I built this platform today. Um, you know, probably as good as someone would build a doghouse at best. But anyhow, we're going to be showing you guys some of the basics of roofing here. Be it nailing, uh, how to use a hook blade. I'm going to take it super basic, you know, because it's either something that I struggle with in the beginning or I've seen somebody struggle with. So um, let's get right into the order of operations here, okay? You're going to want to put on your aluminum at least your gutter apron first before you dry in a roof let's pretend this is a big old roof and you have an open deck it's going to go gutter apron then your drying material and then after that you can put your drip out drip edge on to cap your sides so i would put on this gutter apron very zip very very simple uh, some people will hang it off like this i've seen people do that because the drip edge has this this bend in it um i don't waste time with that you know what i'm saying so i just get it straight flush give it a send and you want to make sure this is nice and tight and you nail it on. Now this piece was long enough to go across this thing, but I wanted to show you guys how to seam it. So it's real simple. You just get it somewhere close and you pick a couple inch of an overlap. Somewhere in there, no need for a pencil or to be real precise. Stupid snips. And then you just cut that, okay? And then you just put this on flush. You don't want a you don't want a super big overlap. Otherwise, it can get a little bulgy. But a couple inches or something that's not that serious. All right. So ice and water shield. What I do peel that top. You're gonna want to be a lot more careful than I than I'm being today. If you're out on a sunny day. But you basically just want to get this set here, give a few in the center, roll it out a few, a few feet, make sure you pull it up, hit the top again, roll it all the way out. And then good trick for rolling, rolling these up is I always grab half because you're going to have a lot of 30 footers. Grab half, you twist it up and go like this, and look at that, it doesn't come apart. So then just do it again, make sure the bubbles are out. Get it there. You're always gonna wanna cut this clean. If, uh, well, usually you'll be cutting it off of a roll. I pre-cut it so it wasn't stupid. All right, and then you can just peel this. And a lot of times it'll just fold back down on itself. Maybe I'll show a clip of uh, one of the times I showed ice and water shield. So, then what I'll do is I'll come down here. I always hit my ends, and then you're gonna to wanna to hit the bottoms too. And usually I'll use, I'll only staple the top and the bottoms on ice and water shield, but I do see a lot of people staple in the center. I feel like that's a little, you know, that's room for error, so. And one more thing also, guys, if you're up on the roof, if you're up on that roof and you're stepping on this stuff, ice shield is a lot more slick than felt paper. So I've actually seen someone go off standing on just the ice and water shield on an 812 when they were just fine walking the felt. So you guys got to be careful of that. Also, when you're working it, when you're laying it out, don't step on it because it's easy to be working up here, rolling out the roll, step on it right here, and then it's a, you can't get that thing back up after you step on it on a sunny day. <laughs> All right, so this is a 612 pitch, by the way, that I made. But anyway, I'm going to show you guys how I do this here. All right, so what I do is I get this set on that bottom. You give it a few. Don't roll it out too far. I always set this on the bottom. When people used to do tar paper, we always set three cap nails in the center. I'm setting it. I set it on the bottom. Get it nice and tight. I try not to put these in a row just because, uh, if, you know, if you're... Uh, water where to ever get through when they're in a row you're gonna get a lot more water in because staples do leak but um also especially if you have a surprise rain overnight you don't have a shingle so usually i'll have somewhere to stand I got a straight blade for synthetic. When you come on the other side of this, you gotta be careful. Well, I have to be careful because I built this stupid. But you wanna just use a little pressure a lot of times. 
with your feet. I'll do it like this. So, doing it opposite way here. I really just built enough back here so that I can do cap. I've seen a guy smack his palm one time. Idiot. Hmm. Good thing he's fired. <laughs> All right, I also cut this drip edge short just so I can show you guys how to do these seams here. First off, we have to find this angle because if you look, a lot of guys will just leave it like that. You know, a gutter comes out to here, a fascia comes underneath, they think that's all right. Or they'll leave it like this, which better not to. It's really hard to get in here and trace. Um, so I know this is a 612. So the way, I, the way I've learned over the years is about that much. It's about a four. You know, a perfect 45 is a 12, but I'm going with a six. So I'm gonna be, I would say probably about in there. So we'll give that a shot. Shake some of me over here. Let's see how that looks. I don't think it could have got much better. All right, so that's ready to get installed. So now we have to make this connection, but we've also got to put um, this piece on because we got to make this match up over here. So, all right, so I'm just going to drop a piece in here randomly, okay, and give myself enough. So, you always want to do the back side first if you're looking at it from the front of the house, right? So, the back side just goes up even with the point. So, wherever center is, which is about right there. All right, so we need this piece to come in here and it needs to do its thing, okay? So a lot of times I'll do this piece first. I'll get this butted tight, make a knife mark and we'll get that to go, oh damn, I am shaking, something like that. Now I can mark over here about a half inch, okay? Usually you want seam, so, or factory ends, but it's not that serious. A lot of this doesn't show. So we got that in there, but look at if I go like this and I go ahead and send that and then I go, a lot of people, they'll just do this and that doesn't always look terrible. Sometimes this will bulge out, especially at that overlap. So what I do is I'll come through, I'll take this piece here at about a half inch overlap and I'll cut it like that. And what that's, what that's doing is it's giving a false overlap. Right there. It's giving a false overlap on the front. So, you see how that goes? And then this piece I still gotta cut. So, now we're good. Boom. You see how that came out right here? Now if you're looking from the front of the house, you won't see the seam there. Not that it matters a whole lot when you see an overlap here. One of my guys showed me that, and that's one of the, that's probably the best method I've ever seen on connecting drip edge. One more thing real quick, you guys. A short piece like this, you don't want to go much shorter than that. I see a lot of guys put pieces of, of drip edge on that are this big, or that big. It's pretty unacceptable. I'd say no less than 10 inches. I mean, let's be real. The homeowner probably likes her drip edge just like she likes her men. No less than 10. <laughs> Next, we have starter. There's a lot that goes into the starter, okay? First things first, let's figure out how we're gonna snap our line, all right? If you're just starting out, like on something this size, I wouldn't snap a line. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get this roughly three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch overhanging that gutter apron, okay? The minimum is a quarter. So if you've got, if you've got a really wavy building and it comes out in the middle to be right, right here, right there, about a quarter, then that'll be okay. If not, you'll have to re-snap a line and compensate for it. But for the most part, most buildings are gonna be fairly straight. You can put it on like this. The tar, the tar line's actually a pretty decent thing to measure off of, but 